Hello and welcome to the presentation of Auto Parser, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay Forensics. This material is based upon work supported by the National Science Foundation under two grant numbers and any opinions and findings and conclusions or recommendations expressed in the material are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the views of the National Science Foundation. My name is Andrew Mark. I'm a senior studying cybersecurity networks here at the University of New Haven. I'm here with my colleague. My name is Robert Serafin. I have a bachelor's in computer engineering. I'm working towards my master's in cybersecurity and networks. Uh, we'd also like to note our lab manager, our grant manager, as well as our advisor, Dr. Ibrahim Bagili and Cynthia Grajeda. Uh, they gave us a lot of oversight and assistance in conducting this research, and we'd like to thank them for their help. First off, uh, we're gonna go over our introduction as well as our research questions and contributions and review our methodology and approach. And then we're gonna discuss our results and findings and present our analysis of those findings as well as the tool we created. And then we're gonna conclude our work. To start, the research is conducted based on a forensic analysis of Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And it is important to note that Android Auto was downloaded from the Google Play Store and Apple CarPlay is built into the system operating system. And it's important to note that because of the way uh, that the data is stored and how it's stored, and we'll go over that later in the findings. And then we have a command line tool that we developed to facilitate the automated retrieval of relevant artifacts from forensic images. And we'll discuss that later as well. The motivation and research questions that we had so the motivation is obviously distracted driving, which causes accidents across the world. And we've also seen uh, an increased development of high-tech vehicles and increased mobile integration. So with Apple CarPlay, there's over 600 car models that support it, and it will obviously be growing. And then currently there's 60 manufacturers which support Android Auto, and that's obviously growing on another level too. Additionally, we were motivated by the desire to uh, help law enforcement and provide a reliable and fast method to obtain relevant information from phones that were involved in collisions. And we wanted to kind of parse together and extract um, only the relevant information just so that it provides the necessary information quickly, uh, which can speed up investigations. Which leads us to our research questions, which is what data can be found that is related to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay? And how can we extract the most relevant information information that investigators may need. And from the information that we extract, can we provide an insight into the in-vehicle environment uh, for crash investigations and helping to understand what happened? Previous work was conducted on Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and presented in a few different places. Uh, first, the blogs, which were done by Joshua Hickman, uh, and also some conferences, which uh, SANS DFIR Summit and these works presented uh, work about Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but nothing was formally uh, published or peer reviewed. There was also work conducted on mobile GPS mapping applications uh, by our advisor, Dr. Bingili, and a couple of his co-authors that we drew some insight uh, and some methodology from. And we also uh, drew some insight from work that was conducted on vehicle ad hoc networks and vehicle infotainment applications. So our contributions uh, we can discuss today are our peer review paper discussing the structure, makeup, and important files associated with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and also a presentation of digital artifacts that we found within, forensic, uh, within the forensic images. We presented those in an educational module uh, that you can access through the Artifact Genome Project at agp.newhaven.edu. Additionally, we contribute a command line tool, which was developed to facilitate that automated retrieval of all the artifacts from the forensic images, and you can access that from the GitHub link there. And we also uh, contributed a home-built simulation and testing environment. We created a framework for that. Uh, we built a stereo HUD unit that students can interact with and that served as our testing platform, one of our testing platforms. To briefly go over our apparatus, uh, we used a Samsung Galaxy S6 and an iPhone 5S. It's important to note uh, that in some cases for the iPhone 5S and for Android Auto, uh, the applications or the device were updated. And we allowed that to happen because we wanted to see how information spread and changed uh, between different versions. We also had the Alpine ILX W650, which was the stereo head unit that we uh, used for, 
for our system. We also had some other supplies that we used to kind of create that isolated stereo environment. We also used a 2020 Subaru Crosstrek, which was our real world test. And also you can see the list of the forensic imaging tools and other uh, analysis tools that we used. So our methodology and approach uh, were designed around simulating user interaction. And we wanted to do that in a couple of different um, manners and environments. So first we designed and developed the stereo head unit that we used for our simulated environment and our isolated environment. And our goal was to simulate user uh, interaction as the best we could. So we sent and received text messages. We made phone calls. Uh, we interacted with Siri and Google Assistant, uh, whether that was making phone calls or asking them to send or receive text messages. And we also played Spotify, uh, which served as the music environment or the, the music portion of our environment. And we did that because it was uh, compatible with both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and it could be downloaded both on both devices. Additionally, we followed directions from Google Maps and Apple Maps uh, to, again, simulate daily interaction. And we conducted both of those tests in the simulation environment and the Subaru Crosstrek just to see how the data changed uh, vehicle interface to vehicle interface. And we also then obtained the forensic images of the phones and then developed our tool to discover, abstract, retrieve, and tabulate the relevant artifacts from the forensic images. So next we're gonna go over uh, that simulated environment that we built. The stereo that we have, it's the red um, Vulcan battery supply. And the yellow uh, notifies the wiring that we had. And then the green is the actual head unit and the blue are the speakers. Uh, the stereo head unit is what we used initially until we had a vehicle where we could conduct our real world driving and uh, interaction. Let's discuss the findings. So here we have the important file paths, which is the important data path directories and files found within the disk. So we list out the Apple CarPlay relevant files and the Android Auto uh, relevant files. It's important to note there uh, that we're gonna discuss most of these files. Um, but the CarPlay Connect timestamp and the CarPlay 6X timestamp are interesting to note because they don't have any data in them. However, the uh, file timestamp associated with that uh, are associated with uh, when the CarPlay was connected and whether it was successful or not, which are intriguing to note. So let's talk about Android Auto. Uh, first, the car service database, uh, carservicedata.db, lists out the information for the vehicles and the devices that were connected. Uh, so any vehicle that the, the phone was connected to. And that contains vehicle and Bluetooth IDs, information about the Wi-Fi connections and passwords for the vehicles. Uh, our vehicles and the head unit, uh, the super cross check that we had and the head unit that we had, um, the Alpine head unit did not support uh, Wi-Fi, or the Subaru Crosstrek did, but it was not set up and we did not uh, use that. Next is the common user settings.xml file, which lists out the settings and configurations for the device while connected to the car and how the device was connected to that car, whether it was via USB or Bluetooth. Uh, it's important to note that um, Bluetooth is supported for both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but our head units uh, did not support it. So we were not able to test that. However, um, we still were able to con conduct uh, relevant research. Next is the default app, which provides the package information for the default applications displayed on the Android Auto inter interface. And then we'll continue to discuss Android Auto. So the auto launch prompt.xml file contains information about the auto launch feature offered by Android Auto, which is when you connect the device to the head unit, you don't have to open up Android Auto. Then there's the car service.xml file, which contains the car module feature set values and some other vehicle information for the connection to the vehicles. And it's interesting to note that uh, compared to the Alpine stereo unit, which was the simulated stereo unit that we built, and the head Subaru head unit, uh, this file contained other features for the Subaru head unit, such as car mode and other features that uh, were associated with the Subaru head unit. So that's a, an intriguing thing to know. So now I'm going over a couple of pictures of those files. So here we have the common user settings file, which uh, denotes some of the 
strings and Boolean values and settings associated with Android Auto. So there you can see that the screen policy is always on, which means that uh, the device screen will always be displaying Android Auto um, or it will always be on while connected. And then we also have the auto reply message, which is the on driving right now. And then the information about uh, that Bluetooth there and then the USB. It was important to note that for the Samsung, in order to use Apple CarPlay, uh, or not Apple CarPlay, excuse me, Android Auto, you had to connect the device via USB and via Bluetooth uh, for you to be able to use Android Auto. Then the car service that DB file uh, contains information about those vehicle connections, as we had discussed previously. So there's information about the manufacturer, the model, the year, the vehicle ID, and some other information. And let's discuss Apple CarPlay next. So again, Apple CarPlay is not an application. Uh, so a lot of the information that we found was scattered across the file system in different uh, files that contained other settings for the phone. So the cache plist file lists out timestamps of the phone settings and some non-CarPlay location calibration information. The com.apple CarPlay lists out those vehicle pairings. The com.apple celestial file uh, contains settings for the phone features like volume, camera, and the display information. And then the com.apple springboard plist, among a whole bunch of other settings, lists out those recently used applications. And the icon state and GUI ID CarPlay desired icon state plist files uh, provide information about that icon layout for the CarPlay dashboard. And that GUI ID is unique to each car. So that we noticed that there were um, unique files for each vehicle that the device had connected to. And obviously that's going to be different as you may want a different layout between different vehicles. So here we have some pictures of those files. So that cache plist file uh, contains the last vehicle connection, and that's done in the Coco Core timestamp for Apple. Um, and then the com.apple springboard plist, uh, there's the items there which denote that CarPlay recently, sorry, Car Display recently used applications. So mobile phone, Spotify, and Apple Maps. Then here in the com.apple celestial plist file, uh, we have settings associated with volume, the camera, uh, but the CarPlay settings were, or values were the now displaying app ID and the now displaying, uh, now playing app was playing upon CarPlay disconnect. So this was the information about what was playing when the device was disconnected. So we have the now playing app display ID upon CarPlay disconnect, which was Spotify. And that also tells you, was the application being used or uh, playing once it was disconnected, right? So whether somebody had paused Spotify and then disconnected the phone or whether it was still playing while the phone was disconnected. It's important to note that we never used Apple Music as our music source. So we have some theories as to why uh, that com that Apple, that music um, displayed. And then here we have the GUI ID CarPlay desired icon state, which is associated with the, the icon layout for the vehicles in the head unit. So here we have the ILX W650, which was that Alpine uh, stereo head unit. And you can see the phone, the music, that Alpine OEM, Spotify podcasts and more. And that was obviously different for um, the Subaru. And next we're gonna discuss the auto parts tool. So for our auto parser tool, we broke down it into four steps uh, that we call DART, discover, abstract, retrieve, and tabulate. So first it discovers, which checks the word list, um, check the words list for the file path and files, then extracts and creates the folder structure for the artifacts found, and then parses that information uh, found within those artifacts, and then displays it in a user-friendly format So here we have our tool operation. This is on the left is our high level automation algorithm. Uh, we require Python 3 and a tar image of a device and that it can either be iPhone or Android. And then there's an optional uh, option for a word list. Uh, the user can create one or they can just use the default one that's already there. So we can see that 
you can select either the Apple option or Android option, and then it goes to the image analysis, which is uh, when the default word list is used, which means that the word list uh, option is not set. You have the initial hashing, uh, the searching of the archive, the extraction analysis, and then the after check of the, ha of the hashes, and then the report generation. Now it's important to note that when the user does select to use the word list option, that means that they create their own word list. Uh, the analysis of the files, which is the parsing, uh, does not uh, is not used. Now we have the output of the tool. So in both cases, the tool extracts uh, relevant files into the case folder for further review. For both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, we have the contacts, phone calls, text messages, and voice commands. A little different with Android Auto, we have the vehicle ID, Bluetooth address, and last connection timestamp. And with Apple CarPlay, we have the recent apps and the last app used when the phone disconnected from the car. So here we have the header to the Apple CarPlay forensics report. We have the file name, uh, the case number, which the user can input, uh, the timestamp, the examiner's name, and the before and after hash analysis to see whether it matches. So we have the uh, Siri voice commands. Uh, we use an API to transcribe the audio files found. And we have the CarPlay pairings, which shows what car the phone was connected to and the apps that go along with it. Here we have the CarPlay apps, which is the recent apps used and the app used when the phone is connected from the car. And here we have the contacts from the phone. We also have recent phone calls, which shows the timestamp, whether it was missed or received, uh, outgoing or incoming, and then the phone number. And then we have the uh, text messages, which is almost the same as the phone calls, except it shows whether, what time it was read and then those messages. So here we have the Android Auto Forensics Report. As you can see, the header is the same as uh, the Apple, except for the file name says Android. So we have the Android Assistant voice commands. Uh, we don't use an API for this because it's not an audio file. So we can just extract the messages found and whether it's in the car or not. And we have the uh, pairings to which car, the vehicle ID, the last connection timestamp and the Bluetooth address. And again, we have the contacts from the phone and the recent phone calls and text messages. So to conclude, uh, we've seen that Android Auto and Apple CarPlay merely serve as projection methods for the applications. And so any of the applications that you use while in Apple CarPlay or Android Auto aren't associated or found with um, those settings files respectively for those applications. So you won't find Spotify information or Spotify um, data with the Android Auto folder or the Apple CarPlay stuff. Um, and we also found that any of the information about the applications used with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay could be extracted out, right? So we could uh, find connection timestamps. We could find information about the vehicles and settings. We could find information about the phone usage. And through the usage of our auto parser tool, uh, we can obtain a quick understanding of the environment that uh, may have led to a crash and can help in a crash investigation. So we can find out information about um, whether the phone was actually connected to um, the head unit or whether they were sending or receiving a text message or, or whether there was a phone call. And we can get a, a bigger picture into whether there was Spotify playing or anything else going on. So thank you for listening. We hope that you learned something. If you want to reach out, you can reach out to us and ask questions or provide some uh, insight into what you may want to see happen with the tool. And additionally, we'd like to give a special thanks to Mark Morin uh, for helping us design and build the stereo system.
So here's our contact information. You can also find that tool at the GitHub link there and also the Artifact Genome Project where we have our educational module. Thank you very much.